All right, everyone, we just got our first trailer for Todd Phillips' Joker movie. I got to admit, like a lot of fandom, I was skeptical about this film, but after this trailer, I'm excited to see it. As a longtime fan of Batman and movie trailers in general, I found a lot of Easter eggs and plot hints in the movie that I'd like to share with you right after this potential spoiler warning for the Joker movie and other DC properties in a couple of Martin Scorsese films. The trailer begins with the portrait of a very tragic man, Arthur Fleck. We see him speaking to his social worker and giving his mom a bath. And right away, I get a Norman Bates psycho mama's boy vibe from Arthur. But it appears his mom, played by Six Feet Under's Francis Conroy, is one of the bright spots in his life. I'm sure nothing tragic will happen to her in the movie that could push her son's mental illness to a breaking point. In the shots of Arthur walking down the street, we see that this is a period piece set in the 1980s. This evokes the feel of a couple Martin Scorsese films that Joker is taking cues from, Taxi Driver and King of Comedy, but we'll get into those specifically in a minute. We see that Arthur is an aspiring stand-up comedian struggling to write jokes. I mean, I can relate. Many times I've poured over the page and struggled to find just the right soundbite to distract from a bad joke that I've written. What? A few of the best pieces from his type five are why are poor people confused? Because they have no sense. <laughs> but it's interesting that his joke is about the poor because as we'll see later in the trailer, the Joker's rise seems to come from the disaffected poor of Gotham City. This idea of the Joker being a struggling comedian actually comes from the greatest Joker comic of all time, The Killing Joke. It features an out of continuity origin for the Joker where he's a poor comic who's driven to madness after the death of his wife. Next, we see him spinning a sign in front of a porno theater. That's right, millennials. People used to have to go to a public theater to see pornography. And this also feels like a nod to Scorsese's Taxi Driver. In that film, the protagonist Travis Bickle takes a date to see a dirty movie while also showing disgust for sexual deviance. All the animals come out at night. You can see shades of the Dark Knight's famous interrogation scene here with the Joker behind mirrored glass. And this scene could also be an homage to Apocalypse Now. It seems like street gangs and thugs are a huge problem in pre-Batman Gotham City. This is reminiscent of the great comic book, The Dark Knight Returns, where the city is overrun with gangs before Batman comes out of retirement. The names on the TV screen here are actually the post-production crew for the Joker. I looked them all up on IMDb. Here's our first look at his love interest, Sophie Demond, played by Deadpool 2's Zazie Beetz. Word on the street is she's playing a poor single mom. And here's where we see another nod to Taxi Driver. Travis Bickle becomes obsessed with saving a 14-year-old prostitute from her pimp. It's this obsession that drives him to become a vigilante and gun down several people. It's easy to envision a similar spiral into madness for Arthur Fleck. Arthur is a regular patient at Arkham State Hospital, inspired by Arkham Asylum from the comics. This name change to a softer title could also reflect the comic book Dark Knight Returns, where it was renamed Arkham Home for the Emotionally Troubled. I love this shot of Arthur in the elevator, struggling to hold on to his own sanity beside a man whose madness has been unleashed. I think these shots of him looking through a cage or at a pawn shop maybe where he's buying a gun or trying to pawn his clown costume. And there are a few shots of his nightlife as a comedian and clown. The 80s were a golden age for stand-up, with comedy clubs suddenly exploding all over the country. But the 80s were also a dark age for subway trains. From watching several 80s movies, I can tell you that back then, the trains were filled with graffiti and violent thugs, some of whom looked a lot like Eric Trump. Next, we see Arthur being thrown out of a red carpet event at Wayne Hall, where they're showing the great Chaplin classic Modern Times. Here's where we start to see the class conflict emerge that appears to be central to the film. People in clown masks are protesting, probably against Mayor Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father, played by Brett Cullen. In the set footage shared a few months ago and in this trailer, you can see protesters with anti-capitalist signs reading things like, a job is rent, capitalism dies, and revolt. This could be another homage to Taxi Driver as well. In that film, Travis becomes obsessed with assassinating a political candidate. In the same way, Arthur could become obsessed with Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne denounces a cowardly man in a mask in this clip, and he's probably talking about the Joker. I think this boy is probably Thomas's young son, Bruce. Like Arthur was stalking the fence of Wayne Manor and then called the boy over to speak to him, and then told him to smile. My guess is that during the movie, Arthur's gonna suffer from some kind of trauma that I'm sure is in no way related to his mother that's ultimately being caused by being poor and then he blames the mayor. This could tie into these next shots of Robert De Niro hosting a talk show where Arthur, in Joker makeup, is a guest. This is an homage to another Scorsese movie, The King of Comedy. In that film, De Niro plays a struggling stand-up comedian who kidnaps a Johnny Carson-esque talk show host to appear on his show. So what if the Joker forces his way onto the show and goes on an anti-capitalist, anti-Thomas Wayne rant that inspires 
all of these clown protesters around the city. This talk show appearance is also a callback to The Dark Knight Returns, where the Joker appeared on a David Letterman-esque show and gassed the entire audience. Also, I have to mention this bizarre scene in King of Comedy, where an extra is not only watching Robert De Niro the whole time, but he starts to imitate him. One of the last shots in the trailer is of the Joker, dancing down the same steps he struggled to climb earlier. I love this metaphor, that living is hard, it's a struggle, but descending into madness is easy and a lot of fun. Well, that's all the homages and Easter eggs that we found, but how about you? What are your feelings about the movie? Do you think that Joaquin can be a better or as good of a Joker as Heath Ledger or Mark Hamill? Please let me know in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.